<laughs> How to draw comics like a pro. My guest Miller, 27 year industry veteran, best known for my work on Injustice from DC, uh, Game of Thrones, uh, you know, all that fun stuff. How to draw comics like a pro. Alright, let me uh, get over to my channel so I can see. So I can see, hey, how this is looking, how to draw comics like a pro. Hey, you can see me, and I look real fuzzy. Sorry, this light whole thing kind of, actually, I could probably swing it back there. Probably looks better that way. Uh, only three people watching. Do hit that like, hit that share. Oh, I put the wrong title on here. This is not persecuted Chinese. <laughs> All right, let me fix that before we get too deep. In I'm actually going to be only be on for around a half an hour 40 minutes um, so let me fix this first before I do anything nope 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 that's the wrong one live sorry this is a workshop um, yeah there we go this is a workshop I try to do these uh, how to draw how to draw comics like a pro um, not even really sure what uh, I'm going to work on today's save. How to, how to draw. Save. I'll do that all later. Let me grab, let me see uh, what we were looking at a couple, last episode, last episode. <coughs> if I can get to it. <laughs> in a decent amount of time. Why do why? All right, my no. I just need to get it, go back to YouTube. YouTube. I apologize. I do. Uh, I don't know. I think these going an hour on these might be getting a little bit long, anyways. So maybe doing half hour, forty five minute episodes will be better. Um. Let me go back to my last one, how to draw comics like a pro hands and feet workshop and see what you guys were suggesting. And of course, the phone has to ring right now. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Where is the camp? Is it like I haven't looked it up. Oh. Why do you need to know this right now? Oh, uh, it's probably too far for that. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see. Love this. Like, thanks for the workshop. Actually spent lunches. Okay. Uh, comic handle show reflections. I don't know if I'm going to do reflections just now. Facial expressions. <clears throat> Proper proportions of an exaggeration, like on the Hulk or Superman. Hmm. That would be kind of a challenge. That would be kind of a challenge. Yeah, I, I just did a facial one, so let's not... I did a, a face one. So uh, let's not do faces. Let's do... Let's do uh, exaggerated characteristics. So uh, 45 people watching now. Let's jump in. Actually, let's. Um, hey, guys, if you have not gone over to Lone Star Soul of the Soldier yet, this is the book I am currently promoting. It is my book, and I just launched Monster Hunter Late Risers Special, which includes metal prints, including one large metal print of two of the covers put together. So, um, you don't have to do it right now. Link is in the description, I do believe. Yep, back Lone Star here, lonestarcomic.com. Check out the uh, featured featured uh, uh, featured item and let's get rolling on how to draw comics like a pro let's grab a new page do, 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 do. and um, alright so uh, exaggerated features so excuse me excuse me you know that your standard let's let's again start with the standard right standard dude sort of dad bod 
Hey, peace sign. Um, now, standard guy, standard muscles, shape, standard muscle size, all that fun stuff. When you want to do someone ridiculously oversized, you don't kind of just stretch them out. Um, you do still, still kind of have to have some kind of basis, right? You need to build out their skeletal structure. Um, actually, let's let's give this guy a really wide chest, and then uh, he's still got to have all the necessary joints and ligaments where everything meets shoulder points. Um, make them huge like this, so you can and should, uh, at least until you get a good sense of how this stuff works, uh, start with what you would consider a stick figure skeleton, right? <clears throat> Give him a life held chest. Uh, no. Now you're still, again, going to have your points of contact. And this is where learning anatomy on top of structure uh, comes, comes into play. So you have a bone, right? A big guy like this can have a big, thick bone. The pectoral muscles attached to this center part of the chest, the sternum. They all attach here on that bone because that's, I know, weird, right? Tiny, horrible, horrible amount of leverage. That's why the, this muscle has to be so large to pull this, this whole shaft of the bone uh, based on this one part where it's wrapped here. And then uh, the deltoids start here and wrap around and attached to this part of the bone, right? And they that's how they pull, that's the lever. That's the lever that pulls the bone up. Um, the bicep, oh, I forgot, let's see, the bicep attaches here on this bone, right? Not on this bone, this bone, and then it attaches also to the top of this bone. So it attaches here, And that's so that, you know, it acts as, this acts as a lever. You've got a bone here, you've got a bone here, you attach here and you attach here, and then this acts as a, as, as a piston to pull this bone forward. And then you have your uh, triceps attached to the back side of the bone, actually kind of wraps around here, the tendons do. And then um, the triceps pull so this pulls and your arm straightens. This pulls and your arm flexes. Uh, da, 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 da. So regardless, all these mechanisms still have to work, right? It doesn't matter if you're trying to make this dude look like, you know, massive crazy Hulk where, you know, his muscles are just beyond anything reasonable if it doesn't look like they're going to work uh, then something is going to look off about your about about your art uh, another muscle pulls your arms here and I can't if I'm doing just large forms like this I can't really get into um, all the minutia because like I said this is, I'm I actually have to leave to go pick up my daughter uh, in a bit so uh, gonna cut this episode shorter than an hour in here same thing with the uh, trapezius and then the neck when you have a big hulking guy like this the neck obviously has to uh, be strong enough to to match so it's like he's not gonna have a, a, a little you're not gonna have this big hulking dude and then whoop there's my head hey I'm like there you know that doesn't work either so um, <clears throat> the neck has to replicate the power of the form um, so it all works together all right and then you can you can really just build out these muscles because I'm just showing you the the how it works here but yeah you guys know that you know pectoral muscles obviously they're they're like they're like balloons uh, laid across 
a con uh, a concave thing, right? So you've got a balloon. If it's f if it's flat and nothing, it's just kind of flat here. But if you fill that balloon up with water, it's going to bulge out like this, right? And obviously, the more water you fill it up with, the bigger it's going to get. But it still has the same points of contact, and there's nowhere for it to go against the rib cage, so it just gets bigger and bigger until it's just ridiculous, right? I hope that makes sense to you. Let me see if you guys understand in the chat. Um, pop out chat. <laughs> Mike, how do you draw feet? We did feet yesterday, King. We did feet yesterday. Uh, late here, got to head to bed. Post of post op, Captain Marvis. All right, so. Um, let me just kind of do this more in a blocky sense so you understand where I'm going. This is this is over exaggerated uh, forms like a la the Hulk or or the way people draw like a really yoked out uh, whoever. That is one thing. I tend to not like crazy over exaggerations on form. Uh, by the way, if you're gonna have him be this big, you really, you really do have to yoke up his traps and his lats, right? Um, muscles, obliques, serratus anterior, latissimus dorsi, uh, and then obviously, unless you want him to be like, you know, what is it? Savage Dragon is these little tiny pin legs. But uh, let's not do that because we're not drawing Evander Holyfield. Whoa! Uh, same thing. Musculature has to... I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and teach you guys... Well, maybe not this time. I'm not going to teach you everything about anatomy. Um, uh, but I am trying to teach you structural stuff one one thing at a time here one thing at a time uh, hopefully if you stick with me over the course of however many months or years um, you'll figure all this stuff out and then you know you, you're welcome to also uh, do a little homework and, and grab the Bridgman book you can get it for free online uh, as a PDF George Bridgman's complete guide to drawing from life or uh, Andrew Loomis creative illustration I believe that's the one two great resources. Uh, they take slightly different um, directions, but uh, still great stuff, great stuff. What about hats or caps? Um, what about hats or caps? All right, now that's like big bulky guy in stasis, all right? Let's do something more fun. Let's do big bulky guy coming at you. Of course, this is going to have to be like, or uh, I should do something. Well, okay, at some point I'll do something with like perspectives and and foreshortening and all that stuff. You can get a slight sense of what I'm doing here. So I'm still doing the cylinders, right? See, this is all stuff you do have to catalog in your own head. You have to catalog the structural stuff, the anatomical stuff. Um, the way things have flow and balance, um, how things design on a page, good use of space, uh, negative space, uh, giving uh, the eye places to rest if, if, if that's important to the drawing you're doing, right? So let's see here. You're doing Hulk, Hulk Rampage. I don't remember who asked me to do this as the topic, but anybody is allowed to ask any questions they want. Again, this is a workshop tutorial, so I am here as a teacher available for your commentary. Uh, if you have critiques, well, start your own show. 
This is commentary for students and artists who value my opinion and want to learn what I have to teach them. Uh, so, uh, hey, YouTube is open for everybody. If you have, if you have something you want to teach, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so that's sort of a good, uh, you know, it still looks like all these parts can work. The elbows here, so you can still have trap or, or uh, um, triceps that pull that back. Uh, oftentimes, I do like to kind of over exaggerate the triceps um, more so. What, okay, what you don't want to do when you're drawing somebody with a big arm, right? It's like, hey, I've got a big arm, so therefore he's got to have a giant bicep, and it doesn't matter about his tricep. That's not right. Um, that and that doesn't look right, right? Oops. Layer. Oh, deselect lasso. All right. If you're drawing a giant arm, it's the tricep that's still going to take up the majority of the mass. You can have a huge bicep, right? You can have a huge bicep uh, lonking into the forearm and all that stuff but it's still the tricep that is going to take up the majority of that space so don't get lost in this weird fantasy world where uh, drawing ridiculously oversized biceps is a uh, is a good idea drawing models and 3d figures helps the tricep takes up more of the arm anyways yeah I just got the notification for the persecution of the Chinese. I know I forgot to change the name. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, if you, everybody could just share this out real quick. Again, I probably have to leave in oh half an hour, maybe shy of a half an hour. But uh, yeah, tweet it out with the new name, how to draw comics like a pro. If you would, I'd appreciate it. Uh, hit that like button. And if you're new here, please, please do hit that uh, uh, that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications, because uh, I am going to be doing these regularly. Uh, I've done three so far this week, so uh, 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 I don't know. Do you guys want me to keep doing different forms, or would you like me to take one as close to fruition as possible? I'm, I'm, sh I think it's the structural stuff. Uh, you're watching me do that that probably will help you learn more immediately um, just sitting here watching me go from start to finish on a drawing is I don't think it's gonna be that beneficial for you in the short term but um, this as I said this is a workshop audience participation is requested uh, Mike, do you think you have drawn the body in all possible positions? No, 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 no. That's uh, I don't know if that's ever possible. Um, I've drawn it in a lot. <laughs> Gary is painting with five people watching. Uh, Gary should do how to draws as well instead of just live drawing. I think there's a bigger audience for it. Um, how to make a work exciting would be great. I joke, but I really, really want to know how to draw hair or string not look like lines. Hmm. Back structure. Ooh, weak point. Weak point. All right, I can try to give you the basics of back structure. Um, basics, trapezius, scapula, right? shoulders, deltoids, tricep, latissimus dorsi, uh, then you see, you do see the bone here, and you see the bone here, tricep allows for the, the scapula to set in, and then you have the back muscles the tail bone area, the gluteus maximus attaching to the hips, the obliques here, 
that's your basic back structure. Um, obviously, if you pull your shoulders back, your shoulder blades tighten up here. They come more towards the center. If you push your arms forward, the, the shoulder blades pull out this way. Right? The shoulder blades swing back and forth like this. So this is not a... It, it's not like the pecs where the shoulder blades are just stuck in one position all the time. They have... Um, they are designed uh, for movement. So... Um, yeah, there you go. So don't just draw the shoulder blades in the same place every time. You have to keep in mind what the position of your arm is as you're drawing the shoulder blades. So again, we have, and then the neck comes up behind here. Smoking a cigarette. Um, you have trapezius, which is a triangular shape that connects to the neck, turns your neck, right? Trapezius shaped like this. You have the shoulder blades that set into the trapezius. You have the latissimus dorsi, which goes all the way along the back. It is the giant muscle of the back group that wraps around into the front side and, and weaves into the serratus anterior which then weaves down into your obliques here. And then you have uh, back muscles that uh, pull up up and down the back, you know, like when you pull your back up like that, that's your back muscles, muscles doing that. So again, your, your uh, latissimus dorsi, obliques, and then a tight little buttocks. <laughs> Gluteus maximus anterior. Um, deltoids. Tricep. I don't know all the names of the muscles of the forearm. Uh, there's another muscle here, which name always escapes me, that, that braids from your uh, upper arm, uh, connects to your upper arm bone, into your uh, forearm. I, I really need to memorize those names too. Right, and then the neck, and then the neck. All right, so any questions for that? Spinal erectors, put your back into it. Yeah, make making poses or scenes dynamic. I can't do scenes yet. I don't think we're that far along in our uh, showing. You only need to worry about drawing bodies in appealing positions. Uh, structure is great. However, there are not too many tutorials that teach you the tricks of the final finish or finishing stages. I think we are far, far away from that, Arthur Brown. And I think uh, structure is by far the most important part of learning if you are going to learn to draw. Um, and, I'm, and, and look at this. I mean, I could definitely go back and use some refreshers on structure as well. Uh, do one about thumbnailing panel. Again, all of these suggestions, drop them in the commentary um, for, for the next show because we are kind of doing this. How to draw the ladies. All right. Um, let's see. So same basic, basic structure but softer uh, thinner rounder the thing about a woman's shape is that it is um, <laughs> boy where do I go with this without going off a cliff uh, well it's feminine you know it's feminine women are supposed to be soft and round right but not 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 too soft or too round um, men again they do have the same musculature the trapezius the neck the shoulder blades which are more pronounced actually on women than they are on men um, and then the musculature of the back but you're not sitting there trying to draw every muscle you're drawing softened versions of entire muscle groups right softer versions of entire muscle groups. So from the back side, 
you're drawing the uh, uh, triceps, but you're not drawing the triceps, right? You're you're drawing a, a bulge out in the arm here, maybe a little divot, right, to give it some definition. And the instead of drawing the brr, brr, you know big old you know Michelle Obama arms, you're giving her delicate. Uh, soft, delicate, draping, minimal. You have a little bit of, of definition uh, where it's necessary, but again, you don't want to over-define the woman. And then, obviously, women don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so, from that angle, don't forget the hip bones. Hip bones connected to the Ah, bones. Ah, uh, hello, nurse. Ah, uh, da, 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 da. I thought this was a family show. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, from the front. Ooh, this is gonna get me in trouble. Um. I thought we were doing exaggerated forms. How did we get away from exaggerated forms? So you guys have all seen, uh, you guys have seen me draw women before. I'm mean, gonna draw just women and women. Recommendations uh, for keeping arms and legs, etc., in proportion. Um, hmm, it's a good question. In proportion. Let's see. Draw forms in motion. Olive oil. This is exaggerated feminine forms. That wasn't exaggerated at all. That was pretty much what I'm used to saying. <laughs> um, forms in motion. Forms in motion. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should be giving you like more like uh, what the percentage of sizes of everything is like oh it's this many heads tall and this many heads wide or whatever but uh, I don't know I never really thought about that stuff I'm just trying to tell you it's like you don't you don't you want to know that the anatomy is there uh oh did I just kill my Wacom tablet you want to know that the anatomy and the structure is there with the female form but you don't want to emphasize it, right? That's the tricep. There, there's a little bump. There's your tricep, right? There's a little bump. There's your bicep. There's the muscles of the forearm, which are not ever overly rendered. You can put a little indentation here for, for what on, <clears throat> like on a man's arm, right? If you're drawing his forearm. Right, you want to draw that this muscle here that connects to the connects to the uh, higher part of the arm, the bicep. You want to draw every muscle in the forearm, right? Because and then even veins and 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 because like all these cool details, they make a man look 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 steeled and and like and like tough and hard and and unbeatable, but with the female form that is it's well it's attractive to some guys i guess um guys who want to be dominated i would assume but to most men your average man um they want a woman to be delicate and and soft and yeah you don't uh pe people people think i know my anatomy therefore i need to show the anatomy no that's not what art. I guess you know what it's meekness it's meekness in illustration when you know a thing but you know it enough to know that you don't have to show a thing um, like okay so for the stomach right uh, you give a little indication to the rib cage you give a little indentation where the, the stomach muscle is 
But you don't sit there and say, everyone wants to see girls with six packs because it's, you know. I mean, that, that might be fine for very athletic uh, women and stuff. But just like a simple line going down the uh, abdomen, that's, that's enough for most. And then maybe a belly button. Um, you know, the little thing, the hit, a little bit of the hip bone, a little suggestion, the line going into the thigh, this kind of thing. It's not, just don't over render because it just, eh, it, it's the opposite of, of the effect you're trying to get when you're trying to make your character feminine. I'm not trying to say you draw a cartoon, right? You're not drawing cartoon. You're not, well, I don't know. It depends on your style, I guess. And then, of course, and give him, give him a little bracani. All right, all right. Er, no, no part. <laughs> Um, Miller's new comic, Girls with Six Packs. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. She not. She Hulk, not she bulk. Yeah. Uh, make sure. <laughs> uh, okay, that's enough out of you. All right, any other questions? Let's put some hair on her chest. No, no. I don't think so. I love high detail art and find it hard to back cartoonish books. Okay. Uh, miss my She-Hulk. What, you guys want me to draw She-Hulk? It's basically, it's basically drawing. All right. The She-Hulk I dug, like the old John Byrne She-Hulk, it, it wasn't like you know, crazy bodybuilder She-Hulk. She was still a feminine character. Um, she just happened to be, you know, giant, big, a big green gamma irradiated character. So let's uh, see. So you still want to maintain sort of the hourglass shape, but I am gonna make. I'm I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Um, TR French says thanks Mike very helpful got to sleep but I will catch up on the last two lessons right on TR French thank you <clears throat> Mike like women's fitness alright so alright we'll do we'll do the, the exaggerated She-Hulk so she would have she would indeed have the whole six pack right you're going to see the more defined obliques. Except you don't want to lose the femininity of her hips. All right? Let's give her the packs. Give her the packs. And then give her sort of the V-shaped upper torso because you're going for you're going for the muscle muscled the muscle bound version. But you're it's the She-Hulk, so you're not thinking like you know Hulk. You're thinking just a a very like a, a female bodybuilder type size not I don't know I know Ed's doing giant Hulk chick Hulk I, I'm not a fan uh, I'm a fan of Ed of course uh, but I don't like that ridiculous so you want to just kind of want to keep it in the realm of of reality I guess um, she Hulk's costume is like this All right. Let's 
So again, as with the man, right? Um, and here's the thing, she's still a chick, right? So you don't wanna get overboard. You don't wanna be drawing all of the veins and crap in She-Hulk. Even though you're drawing her muscle, mu muscled, it sounds like Popeye. Uh, even though you're drawing her more muscular, even though you're drawing the definitions on her muscle more, um, do you really want to see her big throbbing veins? Because that's she's still supposed to be a beautiful woman, not a uh, not a dude in drag, right? It's not, <laughs> never mind, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> she's still, she's still just Jennifer Walters, attorney at law. So, yeah, give her that, give her that. S keep it, keep it relatively soft with the details, um, but just bulk her up, bulk her up, you know, a little divot divot on the on the six pack but not like all crazy veiny and disgusting <clears throat> she ma'am yeah don't do she ma'am um Lee Field had that on the mutant liberation front after the depressing results from oh, okay. uh, how, how knowing is knowing modern how important is knowing modern fashion all my characters are stuck in the 80s. Yeah, my daughter hates my my lack of sense of fashion. So, whatever. This looks vaguely mamish. Well, that's the thing. If you're going to draw She-Hulk like hulked out or or not, you know, not like not like Hulk hulked out, but if you're going to draw her like a female bodybuilder, you're going to lose that that at least some of that nice femininity you get from uh, from drawing a traditionally feminine character. That's why you know John Burns She-Hulk was just just this beautiful, you know, sexy, not ridiculously yoked out gal. I like that, and that's the way I liked it. But uh, but this is an episode on uh, exaggerated body types, so. What else we got? What else we got? Uh, Burn made her seven feet tall. How do I draw female lips? You guys want to do some lips? It's a little bit of detail. Why not? It's nine o'clock. I'm probably going to get off relatively soon. What? How many? How much? It's been 37 minutes. I think my wife is going to be here soon. Um, well, I tend to draw. <laughs> I tend to draw my wife's lips. I think everyone probably knows. So my wife has uh, what they call, um, what is it called, bow, bow-shaped lips? You know, like a, a, a bow, looks like this. Oops, that was terrible. Right, so she has that shape on the top of her lips, and then I just find that very attractive. So, uh, and then the bottom lip. You can follow what's called the 3P rule, which is, 1p, 2p, 3p, right? These are the three p's that that make up lips. Because this is generally like one bulb, another bulb, right? Some, you know, give or take. Like I said, all this stuff is generalized, so I always take everything with just a little bit of a grain. Um, everything can be different like some women have have lips that are are you know very very flat right but they might have a nice big lower lip it is all i don't know the 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 different range saying how do i draw female lips a woman's lips there's so many different kinds um, you know there's a uh, 
it's it's really something you should you should get the basics on right get the basics like I said the one ball two ball three ball this is your basic this is your basic starting point the lip also you see how I do this I'm always doing this thing and then the tuck um, this is a muscle here the lips fold over each other so um, this tucks in here this tucks in here this overlays the both of them and it gives you this very delicate sort of uh, corner of the mouth where it's you know oversimplified looks like that oversimplified but the top the top lays over the bottom obviously right and then tucks into that corner now it's not that pronounced on some people for some people it might just be um, uh, you know just a little like like that or something and then the lip will come up but it it is there in general so um, practice looking at photographs of, of different women's lips you know or different different mouths and stuff there's there's no limit to the reference on on Google uh, same thing on the side, tuck, tucks into the side. All right. As such. Um, as I was saying, like sort of a feminine, uh, sort of a feminine construct is you do a line, nose touches line, upper lip touches line. Lower lip touches line, chin touches line. Sort of a feminine, you know, whereas a man, it's like nose, lip, and then chin comes out. I, I'm over-exaggerating, but, you know, there's the, the line doesn't follow here. The line kind of bypasses the lips. <laughs> um, that is an oversimplification. I do apologize. Marilyn Monroe is a good start. Sure. Mike, what is our homework for the weekend? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to think of something. I'd have to think of something. And uh, and I go... I'm not going to be able to do this next week, guys. Because I will be at church camp. So, uh, can you draw lips from the inside? Uh, no. Clothes and fabric, Mike. Draw 100 lips. Yeah, there you go. What? Mike's showing us how to draw faces. I did faces on the first episode, Menu Business. Um, I could do a little bit of the... Um, let's see. Let's do the eye. Let's do the eye. All right. So, the eye, ladies and gentlemen, the eye believe it or not, is a circle. The eye is a circle, and upon that circle is the Death Star's laser gunny thing. <laughs> above the eye, above the eye, actually let's start at the bottom, below the eye, there is a thing called a lower eyelid, and it comes up off of the eye, sort of the way an orange peel like if you peel an orange, there's one layer removed and then the eye is underneath it. The upper eye actually is on top of the eye, the lower eye lid, the upper eye lid. And that also comes on top. There is a nice mm, sixteenth of an inch on most people, I think, peel that begets the eye. And the eye is actually inset here. The eye then comes together. There's a tear duct here. <coughs> now this, in turn, is inset within the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe uh, is for at least half the people um, pronounced on the skull, right? So you can see this area will darken. 
this area will fold. And then the bottom of the occipital lobe is the soft part. The soft part of your tissue here will create a little divot. Um, for older people, the occipital lobe both down here becomes very pronounced, right? You start to see the, the cheekbone here, and then this skin here gets wrinkly or dark. And here, let me see. Let me erase some of this. It gets wrinkly and dark. Um, gravity starts having its way with different parts of the eye. The lids will start to droop. This part will start to droop as well. So you'll end up with like, you know, glaucoma or something. Um, and then you'll you'll just see more and more of of the darkness of the lid and the lobe, or, or not the lobe, but uh, um, the orb. And then obviously the wrinkles crunch up into the eye. Here, circling. Your eyebrows get thinner. Old man death is waiting at the door. And then your eyes close forever. <laughs> uh, and you just get more and more depressed. And then eventually you pass on and pray you know Jesus. All right, so that's the eye. <laughs> Sagging and banging. Now for, um, <laughs> obviously it's different for different cultures. Uh, almond shaped eyes for Asians is, is quite common where you don't have all the, all the, um, you can't see, you can't see the occipital lobe like you can in most Caucasians. You get a very light divot here. Um, you might get a little bit here and then your obviously your eyebrow going really lazy here but none of the other um, eye folds if there's an eye fold that you can see it is generally something very thin just above the eye like this right um, so it's important to note if you're drawing people of different uh, ethnicities um, to get get familiarized with the and I hate to say it this way, but the stereotypical uh, patterns of of ethnic variation, because you know there are stereotypical patterns. Uh, there's Caucasoid patterns, there's Negroid patterns, there's Mongoloid patterns. Um, every every what was the word? I hate to use the word race. I hate that word. Um, but every people group has has generalized characteristics. Um, so, uh, true, true, what? Drawing Japanese versus Chinese eyes. <laughs> okay, uh, no. <laughs> Isn't Mike half and half? I'm so uncomfortable. Ethnicity, ethnicity, there you go. This is getting lacist. <laughs> All right, uh, the nose, the nose, the nose. Let's do a little quick primer on the nose. So obviously the nose, if you're looking at the skeleton, the skeleton, uh, you have your actual bone, right? Your nose bone is here between your occipital lobes. You've got a couple of dots for, uh, this is where the veins come through and the tear ducts and all that fun stuff. Um, and then you have a piece of cartilage that comes out from here to form your actual, uh, the shape of your nose, right? <clears throat> this is easily broken, easily manipulated. This is what they cut when they're going in for nose jobs. Now, um, let me see if I can do this. G. Uh, 
All right, I lighten that up. Now I can create another one. Now, if you are going in and you're drawing the nose, uh, this is just basic Caucasoid nose nasal structure, right? Um, sometimes you'll see this bump, sometimes you won't. I like to like at least give it a little bit of a mention. I'm going to do this in planes so it's a little easier to understand. The nose is built. Um, it, this, this is the structure of the nose, and I am sorry if this ends up looking like a phallus, but this is the this is the way it is. The nose is broken in up to in up to one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven parts. Um, there there is a double bulb on the front, right? Now this is very often not noticeable on people. But this is the, the, the structure in and of itself. There is a wing that creates a nostril, right? This wing here, the wing is on the other side as well. And then there is the fatty tissue on the side of the nose as well. And then here you have the bridge. Now, again, let me lighten that up. Let's start another layer. If I am drawing this, I don't draw all that structure, but I'm understanding the structure is underneath it, right? So I I draw. Okay, just a second. Okay, that's time to go, guys. Right, I draw, and I suggest the structure underneath, and then I can even, I can even occasionally do that. So instead of seeing all that other stuff, um, you're seeing that the nose, right? Got it? All right, guys. Your homework is to uh, draw stuff, trying to understand the structure that I've shown you in today's class, and um, see if that helps you in your later uh, in your later illustrations. This has been How to Draw Comics Like a Pro with Mike Miller. And uh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, go check out uh, Monster Hunt Late Risers deal at uh, LoneStarComic.com. Not sure why that's not going up. Uh, LoneStarComic.com. Link is in the description. If you want to support this channel, please do buy my comics. And um, hey, thanks everybody for being here. Be good and uh, try hard. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Gotta go. Bye.